talk about, uh, I guess, you know, you've, you've actually been really lucky in that, uh, or, or uh, in, in terms of being able to find a real variety of roles, it seems like these are the kinds of movies that are made more than any other, but you've found like grown up things and then sort of these more it's sort of younger fantasy kind of yeah. oriented things. What's the secret to being able to sort of bounce back and forth and, and do so as, as often and effectively as you have? Um, I think the secret is wanting to. You know, um, uh, they're, they're really, they're, the, the business will typecast you if you want to be typecast and will stick you in a, a, you know, a little pigeonhole. And if you want to, um, if, you, if you're happy with that, that's fine. And if you're not happy with that, then you have to want to do uh, other stuff and, and ask your people who look after you to try and find as, as much varied stuff. And once they know what you're interested in, then they'll start looking for that and sending it, send it your way. So, you know, but I, you know, all sorts of stories are good stories. And that's really in the end of it. It doesn't really matter whether it's some very heavy drama or whatever, or some small indie film or something which is a, a, has a populist appeal like this. If it's a good story, it's a good story, you know? Sure, sure. Um, uh, how does it feel to, to sort of work on a movie uh, knowing that a sequel is already going to happen? I mean, does that, does that put pressure? Well, does, it, does it make you think about telegraphing what you might do in the next film? You know, what, how does it? Uh, they didn't know. It was, it's, they didn't know for sure. They knew, they know that it, it's there, it's a possibility. And that's certainly the intention is to, is to kickstart um, something like that. Um, is it, in the, goes into the thinking? Absolutely. And, it, and it's very much uh, what Harold Zwart, um, uh, one of his prime directives, if you like, was he wanted this world to seem uh, real and tangible. So he didn't want to have CGI, unless he, excuse me, unless he absolutely had to have it. Um, special effects in terms of stunts and stuff like that, they had to be real. You had to, you had to actually do them. He didn't want wire work. He didn't want you know, fake stuff where you're attached to mechanical arms and stuff like this. He wanted it all to be uh, achievable and real. So, and then the audience would feel that this was a real world that they experienced, and it would set up the, the possibility for as much fantasy as you want in the other movies, wh which they have lots of opportunity for. But in this one, it needed to feel really grounded. So yes, that was a very big part of the discussions. I wasn't a part of those, that, those determinations. Mm -hmm. When I come in, they'd already decided on how they're going to do it. Sure, sure. Well, you know, this this is being compared to things like Twilight and The Hunger Games, and and what's interesting about all this young adult uh, sort of material is that it has these sort of metaphorical and symbolic Absolutely, connections. Yeah. What yeah. do you feel like is the is sort of the underlying theme or the underlying idea that this is exploring that you know is is beneath all of the vampires and werewolves and magic and all the other stuff? Well, I, I can even relate to my own experience of how I saw the world when I was at that age. Um, you're you're on the cusp of adulthood. You're you're leaving the world of your, your family and your childhood, you're about to leave it behind, which there's security in that world. You're, hung, you're hungry for experience, but at the same time it's scary, it, it, it's dangerous, it's threatening, it's exciting, and it will change you. It will change you forever. You will not be the same person once you enter that world. So I think it's a metaphor for what they're on the, what they're on the brink of. Plus, you know, it, it's got that sort of, you, you, when you're that age, you think that you're the only person who's ever experienced this. No one can understand what it's like. Um, you're experiencing uh, love for the first time, and, and you're, you're very sort of dramatic and egocentric. So uh, I think it appeals to all those ideas that they, ha they have this, um, this great drama about their life. So I, I know that I felt that way when I was that age. Sure. So I, I think it appeals to that and, um, and the idea that... Uh, uh, there's always a sort of element of, of forbidden love or, um, you know, uh, unachievable love in these stories. So, Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. Wow.